So Sega is in big trouble. There has been plenty of layoffs and this is nothing new. But what's actually been delving deep within the company has been going on for a long, long time. And it's only the start. By the way, I know this is a big ask, but I'm trying something new here. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. I would really, really appreciate it. Sega's first financial warning came over a month ago in February, talking about a financial hit after sluggish sales during the holiday period. It was quoted as being sluggish and weak because of a lot of games that they put a lot of stock in working and then obviously just not selling the way it was expected. And if I'm going to be honest, Sega has been going this way for quite some time. They used to be one of the biggest publishers, especially back when they bought Total War, sealing Sega's name not just with them, but, but plenty of other new companies off their legacy of the Sonic days, so on and so forth. But games like Football Manager 2024, Sonic Superstars, and Total War Pharaoh, it was slightly downhill for Sega. And we're going to delve more into what Total War and Creative Assembly have to do with this. And it might have really come to a head with Total War Pharaoh, but it didn't start there. You see, the Total War franchise has been heading on that downhill trajectory for quite some time, not just with the lack of love and passion from its fan base anymore, but of course the sales figures as well. I mean, it's no surprise that when Troy came out, it was one of the most hated and possibly slated games in the franchise. This RTS series that has built up its name over decades has now started to be a given that it's going to be a disappointment to the fans. Then when Pharaoh came along last year, there was not that much hope. Some glimmers came in with some extra bits of mechanics and gameplay that we saw in earlier Total Wars. Of course, Creative Assembly saying that they were going to go back to the historical nature of the franchise since it's been really bathed in mythological beasts and beings for the last 5-10 years. But no, it didn't quite accomplish anything that they wanted it to. Not just in the fan reception, but more importantly, at least for Sega, its financial situation. Total War Pharaoh sold about 100,000 copies which for a franchise of this size is disastrous, bringing in a gross revenue of $5 million. The Steam charts for Pharaoh aren't really showing that much better either, with 530 players in concurrent, and this has been pretty much steady since its release, never having surpassed a few thousand players, which is a far cry from when Total War Three Kingdoms came out with its almost 200,000 concurrent player base, which is an insane number, I might add. But comparing Total War sales to a game from 2015, Total War Warhammer, 1.7 million copies as opposed to the 100,000 of Pharaoh, bringing in a gross revenue of $63 million. Okay, it was a new game in a new spin-off to the franchise, but also had the massive name of Warhammer. It was always going to be a success, and I even think then it was a bigger success than Creative Assembly ever thought it would be. But let's compare Pharaoh to a similar style of game maybe another hated Total War title. And this brings us on to Thrones of Britannia, selling over 400,000 copies and bringing in a revenue of 12.4 million, over 400% on what Pharaoh did, which is baffling because the franchise should have grown hugely. Thrones of Britannia released in 2018, not even close to the peak of Total War in terms of its player base and its worldwide renown. Total War Warhammer 2 and later 3 really blasted it off into the stratosphere, selling millions of more copies. So how did we get to this point? And what's the effect that it's having on Sega as a whole? As mentioned, Sega lays off 240 staff and a lot of them at Creative Assembly themselves, a company that only has about 800 people on the team at this point in time. This will have been a huge hit to them financially especially since over 120 staff were let go back in May of last year. A company that was almost at its peak seems to be making quick changes for its financial success and the longevity to keep it alive. But how will that even work? It's not only Creative Assembly, by the way. Relic Studios, you know, the guys that were big back in the day, they made things like Dawn of War. They've also recently announced Space Marine 2, a fantastic sequel to that 2011 game that's coming out hopefully this year. They also took over the Age of Empires franchise. They made a lot of the remasters or remakes and of course have made Age of Empires 4, somewhat of a success in their name. Now, this is one of the biggest pieces of news is despite Creative Assembly taking a lot of hit in staff, they are still going to be under the roof of Sega. Relic Entertainment, however, have not gone that way. 
they have parted completely from Sega as their parent company and going off to be, I guess, an indie studio again, going to be releasing on their own terms and, of course, being invested by their own terms, finding their own investment and releasing games as Relic rather than Relic and Sega. This is great because they have a lot of good stuff going on. The Age of Empires series is probably at the biggest it has ever been. Not just the past ones that have had remakes, HD editions, and of course, complete definitive editions, but Age of Empires 4, despite having a bit of a tricky launch, seemed to have actually garnered a lot of player attention. And whilst it wasn't perfect, I think has gained enough to continue that franchise in a good light. So what is Relic going to be doing now? Well, they're going to be releasing Space Marine 2. I think Dawn of War is a franchise that could be coming back as well. After Dawn of War 3, it was a little bit on the cards, but it's been plenty time since that disaster. And Relic have the opportunity to be as creative as they want. Financially, it's not going to quite be the same, but since Sega's going that direction of laying people off anyway, hopefully it might actually be a positive financially, at least putting the funds in the places that they need to instead of hiring staff that later have to be laid off in one of the most brutal firings that we've seen in recent memory. We saw this because Relic put up a tweet saying, we have important announcement for our players and fans. With an external investor, Relic Entertainment will become an independently run development studio. So it looks like they have sorted things out on their side and these Sega layoffs aren't going to be affecting them too much. At least that's the hope for the development of their future titles. We want to thank Sega who supported us through the years. And of course, they're excited about the next chapter. They're going to be continuing support for games like Company of Heroes 3. I mean, that's an interesting decision since that game was a complete disaster. But I hope that this means they can put it into titles and the series that they've got under their belt. I mean, having franchise such as Dawn of War, Age of Empires, Company of Heroes, Space Marine, it really couldn't be a more positive light for this company. And the fact that they're able to go off on their own, I think is something that hopefully should benefit them. And of course, the players. Because companies like Sega, unfortunately, whilst they have bought us some fantastic titles in the past, because financials are the main incentive, as soon as that starts to drop off, we start to lose our favorite games. And I think that's going to be the main issue that we've seen with Creative Assembly. Titles like Toads of War Troy, which are exclusive to Epic Games, that caused massive resurgence in the hate for the franchise. And then, of course, Pharaoh, which took everything people wanted from a new historical title and crammed it into a small sagas package, selling for 50% more than what players would have expected for a game with that content, is the result of this financial incentive to these franchises. I mean, they even admitted that, taking down the price of Pharaoh when Creative Assembly released all these statements about how they were sorry. And of course, some of the ex-developers came out saying they didn't even think there was enough content to be selling that title. But that's a whole different story. Now, the rumors are that most of these layers of Sega and subsequently Creative Assembly are more operational sides and those kind of jobs rather than actual development. Hopefully, it's not going to slow it too much. Yet, I think the overall indicator is that this has been a horrible few years for Creative Assembly and for Sega in general. And of course, if the big parent company is struggling, it's only a matter of time before the smaller ones start to feel that ripple. So it's great that Relic got out of the way. Maybe Creative Assembly could do something similar in the future, but I think first they need to fix the fan reception to their beloved franchise. But let me know what you think. Do you think this is the end for Creative Assembly and Sega, or do you think they can recover from it? Big companies like this very, very rarely go bust. It's more likely they get bought out by someone else in the end, but Sega's at that level where hits like this don't really matter that much to them. But the game studios under them, that's where we start to see the detriments. After the golden goose of Total War has started to become more like an ugly duckling, I'm not sure Creative Assembly and Sega have the same impact they once did.